I know you were talking about this on your channel. Um, and I know I normally like it's don't follow much going on with sports, but I heard you talking about this and then this is very interesting to me. Uh, there's a Brooklyn Nets all-star Kyrie Irving. Uh, he and another player, um, I forget his first name, but the last name's Isaac, uh, who, Jonathan is, Isaac, Jonathan Isaac. And he is a little bit more uh, like of the Christian side of things, but both have recently been very, uh, outspoken. They are part of the 10% of unvaccinated, uh, NBA players, um, that are, you know, speaking out about and very clearly concisely yeah. m measured, you know, in, in such a way that it'd be very hard to criticize them the the reasons for their skepticism and like you're saying these guys are all in their peak shape i mean professional athletes college students children are are in the best shape you know well not yeah. all children but like absolutely professional athletes and then you start to think like is the government just going okay well which groups can we manipulate fully like the government like the, what ties do we have that are trickling down into what corporations mm. It's not even logical. They're probably just like, okay, well, let's follow the money down and see who who can we really like grab by the balls here, like the schools because of federal funding, the corporations, right? Because they've begun to really do the government's bidding. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, celebrities, which are now like sort of low key politicians, same thing, doing the government's bidding. But I think it's really interesting because, uh, and you were talking about this it actually might come to a point where he has to opt out of games in uh, New York city, New Orleans and LA. And it's like mm -hmm. the nets are obviously based in Brooklyn. Yeah. So it's like, could, could we be looking at a situation where he is not even playing his own home, home games? games? Yeah. That that's a, a, a reality, you know, because of that, it's like the NBA itself doesn't have any vaccine mandate, at least not yet. But the the those individual states do um, in uh, areas or cities where they say if you are here, you need to if you're gathering indoors, you need to be wearing uh, sometimes it's mask. Some uh, with them, it's more uh, with this jab. And that's insane that you're talking about people that are in the best shape of their life. Like, period. The age demographic already is like among the least vulnerable. When you talk about people like from the age of zero to like 30, like these are these are very it's almost their bodies are machines. Right. Like exactly. Yeah. It's like statistically insignificant. No NBA player has died from this. Uh, most of them have no symptoms. Uh, and, and for to, for them to even be asked that, like, uh, why aren't you getting it? Just goes to show how insane that this is, that you're asking someone in the peak shape of their life. And in the case of Jonathan Isaac, in the case of um, uh, Bradley Beal, the Washington Wizards guy who was saying the same thing, these guys already had it and recovered from it. Hmm. Why on earth would they, in the least, in, in the in the population that they're in, age and health demographic, what point other than it's just like this pledge of allegiance? You know, that's it. It's just you want them to do it, so they must do it because logically it's not even sound. Scientifically, it's not sound. Because it is, I think it's for the same reason, like why they push the celebrities because they yeah. are many celebrities yeah. and they go, well, look at the, look at the, this person's sphere of influence. And if they get it, then that trickles down. Yep. They can get everybody else. Culture. That's where it's all. That's what it's all about. And this is why I was saying like, are we actually, is it about to be up to the NBA guys to get us on the other side of this? <laughs> Nicki because, Minaj. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, is, is that really what we're about to come to? Because think about it. Like this isn't like, maybe not in the case of like Jonathan Isaac, who is, you know, he's young, very young talent. But guys like Kyrie Irving, we're talking about all stars, you know, future Hall of Famers. You know what I mean? In that case, if he doesn't miss, if he sits out like a home game or all home games, that's a big deal. That says a lot. Uh, and they don't like that because that's influential. Because it, it and it's not like these guys are with Bradley Bill, like Jonathan Isaac, asking these ridiculous questions because they can't even ask them. I was listening on my way, I listen to sports radio almost exclusively. Um, and I think it was Tiki Barber that does some th something with CBS, like, um, like, oh, it's like 30 second deal where he talks about what's going on. And of course, he brings up this situation and he said, well, their criticisms were, uh, of not getting it were questionable at best. Of course, he doesn't explain how that is at all. He just says, well, they're not doing what we need them to do. Therefore, it must be questionable. That's how they talk to these guys. And if, if the Bradley Bill video, I loved because he's just asking questions like I had it. I recovered. You can get it. You all have been vaccinated. You can get it still. 
you can uh, pass it along. What are we doing? And when you press it to them like that, they're like, oh, because we were, we're told. That's it. That's ultimately what this. You can't say, well, it's because you might get someone else sick. You can do that vaccinated. That's So at the only person at this point that is being put at risk is the person that is not getting it. That's it. That's it. Because you can still spread it to someone vulnerable or not, despite being vaccinated. That's a fact. We know that. So this is about allegiance more than anything. So when I see these guys and, you know, Joe Biden rolling up his sleeve, getting a vaccination in front of everybody. To me, that's more of a pledge of allegiance. And looking at this is more ritualistic. Oh, it's him bending over in front of everybody in front yeah, of a of live, you know. Yeah, that's of course. <laughs> Cameras rolling. Everybody see me. It's, it's, a, it. it's ritualistic. That's all mm -hmm. that this is, because this isn't based in any sort of science. But I, I, John, John, to end, like Jonathan Isaac, I really love what he said towards the end of that question when he was being asked that. And he was like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy how we're at this point to summarize basically what he said, where you even have to ask me that. You know what I mean? When really, in reality, considering this is my own medical choice, if I told you I didn't want it because I didn't want it, that should be it. Shouldn't even be any question. The fact that they feel like they're obligated to a response because they opted in, they're obligated for you to give reason why you're not part of this ritual is insane in itself and things that we didn't do. I will forever say that vaccine selfies are among some of the cringiest shit that I've ever seen uh, uh, yeah. people, people do. It's 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 really great when you don't have a personality to just be like, oh, the the pandemic is now my personality. And uh, here's the thing else. I can to hear this. This fills up my social media. This is something easy I can fight with people about. This is a great distraction from my own life, my own family, my own hopes, dreams, goals. It gives you the perfect get out of life free card. You don't you know, you don't have to like pursue your hard goals anymore. You don't have to like. I don't know. And it gets you out of anything that's difficult mm -hmm. because you can, I don't, you can blame it on the COVID. fear. Yeah. Blame it, blame it on fear of COVID or blame it on the COVID itself is where we're at. And that sucks. You know what I mean? Like then is you definitely, we got labor shortage and all of these, all this weird stuff going on because, uh, you know, welfare statism does what welfare statism does. And a lot of people found out that this was a way for them to get money to do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's speaking to your point, we're dealing with this in both of our industries um in entertainment and art and all of that and culture subculture related stuff where people are using this as a means to make themselves look good look like good people i've always said like activism really in any in any way shape or form is something that a lot of people seek that have nothing they don't have anything mm -hmm. that they can point to attribute to that they created that they say I'm, I'm proud of and activism requires nothing of you um this is why a lot of them latched onto this pandemic it makes them look like good people despite doing nothing minimal effort to get a jab in your it's minimal effort. Um, and these guys like to think that they're saving the world and you are the villain um, in this situation because you're simply against forcing people. That's what this is about. I know they, they worded it like that, like it's vaccinated versus the unvaccinated, but it's not what it is. It's about uh, people <clears throat> that are pro-freedom and free people that want to force folks to do what they uh, want them to do. But that's because they're losers. I call them <laughs> what they are. They're fucking losers, mm -hmm. man. I like your, your point about Kyrie Irving, he being an all-star, being somebody you can't ignore, someone who his uh, absence from games will make a huge difference. So the question is, I wonder what you think about this. Is it now kind of quietly up to, like, if you look at the people who are best in their field, and I uh, I have an example of like a, you know, family friend, he, he works for a company. He does the books. He's very good at what he does. You know, the last year and a half, he's kind of agreed to, okay, I'll work different hours because I'm not wearing the mask. I'm not getting the jab. And they've kind of worked it out for him because he does such a good job and he is kind of not replaceable. So, and then you have someone like Kyrie Irving, mm -hmm. he's at the top of his game. Does this now come down to the people that are the best in their field? Do they have the most power and influence right now? Because if you are right, somebody's assistant, you are kind of more disposable. I don't even think any healthcare workers are disposable, which is why like and that's a whole nother point, you know, that another self inflicted wound that you said that mm -hmm. the healthcare industry is creating for itself right now. But I wonder, it's like, if we could all kind of realize like, Hey, if you're at your job right now and you kick ass and you are not replaceable, or if you're an athlete who is not replaceable and you are at the top of your game, 
maybe we these folks have more power than they realize and maybe it's is it up to them to kind of step it up a little bit if this is how they feel yes um this is a subcultural movement that we're dealing with there's no secret as to why the government sought to seek out influencers as well as these i mean blue check marks on you know twitter to basically do their bidding right to tell them hey you, we're going to funnel the information through you because of the power and influence that it is that they have this ends tomorrow if people and there are folks on different political ideologies not all of them identify as whatever you do you know what i mean but they're at least against as you say use of force or forcing people to get let's say the vaccine um despite call themselves whatever they call themselves the minute they do that especially these guys that are very influential it stops it simply does right but they're banking on people being coerced and unfortunately it's successfully happened to a lot of people um and being threatened with uh with that that they won't do it but if you know you kick ass if you know you're at the top of the game i tell these i always and you know not gonna name names but they know they are these artists that email me or message me or text me or whatever that are in my space uh that are in the metal core and the hardcore saying like hey man i agree with you and i say don't tell me that shit. that does me no good yeah how you don't need you, an ego boost you yeah don't need, i don't need that that, that, that yeah. doesn't mean no good how about you go tell your audience that shit instead of hiding because you are for afraid of what will happen maybe you get ostracized or something like that so telling me that you secretly agree with me does us no good it doesn't stop yeah. what's happening you're in a position of power and influence how about you get out there and tell these folks how you feel these people don't understand how powerful that they actually are and it exists in so many different industries but this whole okay i am going to remain silent in hopes that it will get us back to normal obviously that's not working it's just emboldened them they've become more powerful they've become more uh, uh uh like lively if anything because they think that they're doing something without there being a response uh and this is why i say it stops when you want it to stop and when you demand that it does what happens in australia doesn't happen in in, uh, in other areas or what's happening right now if the populace is is complicit as they are yeah of course it's going to happen there if you're not well it, it's it's less of a likelihood to happen so you need to voice your concerns um, and there's nothing wrong with it. And yeah, are there going to be the, these minions of brainless that are going to say something crazy to you? Yeah. Like me and my, my me and my band's old, old manager had to, you know, we were on this issue. Opposite ends. Half the end. They ain't no luck. It ain't nothing to me. Whatever. It is what it is. But I'm not going to not say what I'm saying because I recognize this is wrong. Period. So we need more people that are in those spaces to just get up and say, you know what? no more and like you uh like you were alluding to these people that are in these powerful positions that are let's say they sh they stop the show like the books it, it stops with them they're powerful they're influential and they're basically irreplaceable those are going to be some very if we may be looking at this 10 15 years down the line 20 years down the line like man once more people started you know in that position and maybe it is something as simple as Kyrie freaking Irvin which would be crazy, but hell, we might be saying it, that those guys uh, uh, kind of spread this out and more people felt, got more emboldened themselves to say, you know what, no more.